The US is about to experience one of the greatest inflationary periods in world history. Any credibility the Fed has left will be lost. Federal Reserve notes soon won't be worth a continental. There are numerous signs that the economy has suffered fatal wounds. Permanent business closures are rising as the economic impacts of the pandemic-induced government shutdowns continue to ripple through the economy. And it's not just the problems facing small businesses. I have already reported on the looming tidal wave of evictions, the increasing number of mortgage delinquencies, the rising number of over-leveraged zombie companies, and the tsunami of defaults and bankruptcies on the horizon. Given the deep wounds inflicted on the economy by the shutdowns, we should expect a quick bounce back even with a vaccine. As I have said over and over again, curing the pandemic won't cure the economy. And then there is the dirty little secret Powell will never admit to. The Fed doesn't have another rabbit to pull out of its hat. The cure that the Fed is offering up is actually killing the patient. Ultimately the Fed's monetary policy is going to collapse the dollar. There were a number of inauspicious records set in 2020 and the impacts will continue to reverberate through the economy in the future. The Federal Reserve created money at a record rate. It also increased its balance sheet to record levels. And not to be outdone, the US government set a budget deficit record. These three records were actually linked. The money printing and expansion of the Fed balance sheet were necessary to monetize the massive federal debt. And there is no sign that anything will be different in 2021. The pandemic put Federal Reserve easy money policy on hyperdrive. But make no mistake, the Fed was already forcing interest rates artificially lower and engaging in quantitative easing long before the pandemic arrived on American shores. In fact, there was no plausible exit strategy from this policy after the 2008 financial crisis and there is no exit for it today. It's important to understand this isn't just about rescuing the economy from a crisis. What was once considered extraordinary monetary policy is now the status quo and it's necessary just to keep the economy chugging along. The government needs to lighten the burden that it places on the economy, it should be cutting spending. Instead, it's doing the opposite and it's adding an inflationary problem to the health problem, so we're in much worse shape. Welcome back to the Nomad Economist, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. There seems to be a growing consensus in Washington that the only way to fix the worst economic downturn in more than 70 years is by giving out much more free money. Joe Biden wants more stimulus, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen wants more stimulus, and most members of Congress from both parties want more stimulus. First of all, this is not going to stimulate the economy. This is going to sedate the economy. So, it's not a stimulus. It is a sedative. Of course none of the previous stimulus packages that we spent trillions of dollars on fixed the economy, but they insist that this latest one will finally do the job. In addition to the $1.9 trillion package that Biden has already proposed, Democrats in Congress are now pushing monthly direct payments to parents that have children under the age of 18. Needless to say, that proposal has overwhelming support among the American people, because direct socialist payments have become wildly popular since they were first introduced last year. But by borrowing and spending so much money, we are literally committing national suicide, but very few people are concerned about that at this point. Even though the previous round of stimulus payments is still being sent out, Biden and his minions can't wait to start sending out another round. In fact, Biden insists that we literally don't have a second to waste. We don't have a second to waste when it comes to delivering the American people the relief they desperately need. I'm calling on Congress to act quickly and pass the American Rescue Plan. Quite a few independent economists are alarmed by the inflation that previous stimulus payments have created, but Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is dismissing those fears. Instead of focusing on inflation, she says that not sending out more free money would be an even greater risk. As Treasury Secretary, I have to worry about all of the risks to the economy, and the most important risk is that we leave workers and communities scarred by the pandemic and the economic toll that it's taken, that we don't do enough to address the pandemic," Yellen told CNN's State of the Union on Sunday. I've spent many years studying inflation and worrying about inflation, and I can tell you, we have the tools to deal with that risk if it materializes," she continued. But we face a huge economic challenge here and tremendous suffering in the country. We've got to address that. That's the biggest risk.
she is assuring us that inflation is not an imminent threat, and perhaps we should believe her. After all, if we can just completely ignore the hard numbers and the extremely shocking charts the Federal Reserve keeps putting out, what she is saying sounds pretty good. I know that it is not normal for M1 to nearly double over the course of 12 months, but this is the new normal where the laws of economics are suspended and we can do whatever we want. So let's borrow and spend trillions more because this party is just getting started. A while back, Republican Senator Mitt Romney proposed thousands of dollars in direct payments to parents with children, and Democrats liked that idea so much that they plagiarized it. Under the proposal, the Internal Revenue Service would provide $3,600 over the course of the year per child under the age of 6, as well as $3,000 per child of ages 6 to 17. The size of the benefit would diminish for Americans earning more than $75,000 per year, as well as for couples jointly earning more than $150,000 per year. The payments would be sent monthly beginning in July. The benefits would not be deducted off taxpayers' existing tax liability, meaning American parents would still receive $250 per month per child, or $300 per month per young children, even if they have an existing tax obligation with the IRS. I think that this proposal will have a 90% approval rating with US parents. Of course a minority will strongly object. They will insist that these are socialist welfare payments and that the federal government should not be doing this. If you are one of those objectors, you are 100% correct. But take the money anyway. Let me be 100% serious for a moment. Since the entire ship is going down anyway, take anything that they send to you and use it for yourself and your family. At this point, survival is the priority. There is no going back to the way that things once were. We are literally committing national financial suicide, and at this point even most Republicans in Washington have completely discarded any pretense of fiscal responsibility. In the old days, Republicans in Congress at least made minimal attempts to slow down the wild spending that the Obama administration was pushing. But now almost all resistance is gone, and the left is greatly rejoicing that, the path to a fast recovery and an era of prosperity is now open for Biden. The left has stewed for a dozen years over Obama's inability to secure more fiscal stimulus. And while he might perhaps have gotten a bit more out of Congress with more clever design, ultimately the most important constraints came from outside 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Obama's economic recovery push came in an atmosphere of pure hysteria, in which media and business elites joined by many members of his own party believed the United States stood on the precipice of hyperinflation and a public debt crisis, the resolution of which had willing partners across the aisle. All those myths now lay in tatters. After hard experience, the path to a fast recovery and an era of prosperity is now open for Biden. Yeah, we'll see about that. But what we do know is that all of the insane borrowing and spending that has been going on is already causing inflation to show up in countless ways. In 2020, silver performed even better than the stock market did, and it continues to climb higher. Gold has been surging too, and the outlook for precious metals is going to continue to be bright as long as our leaders continue to flood the system with more money. Meanwhile, the real economy continues to steadily deteriorate. Without a fresh round of pandemic aid from the federal government, about a third of the nation's pandemic-stricken small businesses are warning they won't be able to survive. That's according to a new report published by the Federal Reserve, which found that sales for 88% of small businesses have not yet returned to pre-crisis levels. About one in three, roughly 30%, of businesses said they expected they could not stay afloat without further assistance from the government, according to the report from the U.S. Central Bank's 12 regional offices. No amount of complaining from the rest of us will prevent a new round of stimulus payments from going out. The good news is that all of this new money is likely to improve short-term economic conditions for a very brief period of time. But the bad news is that our long-term problems continue to get much, much worse. We are literally in the process of completely destroying our money, and since the US dollar is the de facto reserve currency of the whole world, the economic fate of the entire globe is in our hands.